Hadouken! Welcome to this webinar on character walks. My name is Alex Williams. I'm the head of animation at Escape Studios. And we are going to be talking about character walks today. And character walks is a uh, subject that is important. And when you start off animating, you always want to learn how to do a great character walk because it's kind of the gateway to being a character animator. If you can give a character uh, personality when it's just moving, that's a great foundation to build on for doing a really great character animation. Now, uh, can everybody hear me? I cannot hear you, so I think... In theory, you should be able to write um, questions um, and in the in the webinar chat. Great. Uh, so Levan says all good. Thanks. Maria says yes. Can hear me loud and clear. Okay, that's really super helpful. Thank you very much. So now, hopefully, you guys have um, access to this little file of Monty walking. Um, great, thanks for that, everyone. So Felipe Shreyas and Titi Marian can all hear. Um, so did you guys manage to get access to this Maya file of Maya walking? Okay, someone says it isn't working. It isn't fatal if you can't get this. Um, the reason I uploaded this was um, uh, just to give you guys a basic walk cycle to work with because it, it isn't massively interesting to have a webinar on how to animate a walk cycle. There are frankly lots of tutorials at YouTube which will show you how to make a walk cycle. And that in itself isn't particularly interesting. But um, oh, now someone says it worked in 2018 but not in 2015. Yeah, so I'm running Maya 2018 and this is a dot .mb file, that is to say a Maya binary file. And that means that um, it will be difficult to load that file in an older version of Maya. So it's usually a good idea to be downloading the latest version of Maya if you can. And don't forget, you can download uh, these, um, the latest versions of Maya for free from Autodesk uh, with the educational license. Obviously not the commercial license, but the educational license is free from Autodesk. So, um, uh, somebody, uh, somebody uh, Daniel here asks, how long will the lecture last? It's going to be approximately an hour. It's five past six now. I'm hoping to wrap up the tutorial within half an hour, and then I'll take questions after that. But what I'm going to do is just show you guys how to do variations on a basic walk cycle. So it's really about doing character walks, and, and this is really based on um, – uh, some workshops I did up at Jagex, the games company up in Cambridge, where they were transitioning to uh, Maya from their own proprietary software. And we did various workshops based on taking a really simple walk cycle, such as this, just a guy walking on the spot, and then doing variations on it, um, doing uh, character walks based on this. So first of all, let, let me just show you guys a couple of uh, slides. Um, so here's a, some slides on, on character walks. And I'll just go to the slideshow version of this. Um, and these are character walks. Take, this is taken from some drawings by Cliff Nordberg, who was one of the great Disney animators, who was the head of training at Disney Animation back in the 1950s. And he did these drawings. And you can see how just the pose itself makes a really big difference to how a character, what, what a character's um, personality is. Um, everybody walks differently. If you walk people, if you watch people walking, if you go to the train station, watch people on the way to work, uh, you'll see just the way people walk tells you an enormous amount about who they are. And without doing any kind of inflection on the face or the facial expressions, you can tell just by people's posture, as well as by the way they move, who they are, what kind of a day they've had, what kind of mood they're in. Today, we'll take a look at an angry walk. Uh, we're gonna, this, this, these drawings are taken from the Animated Survival Kit, which is a great resource for animators. It's the book we recommend here at Escape Studios, um, and I recommend you guys get it as well. Um, we'll, we won't be doing this one, but th this is uh, some 
suggestions on how a very overweight or pregnant person might walk where they might be leaning backwards. Um, here's a sad walk, which I'll show you how to do. Um, taking Monty and make him or her feel super sad. Um, we'll also uh, take a look at uh, some different ones, a happy walk. And in fact, what we'll do now is start with the simplest character walk, which is the double bounce walk. Um, and this is a walk that was actually invented by uh, animators back in the 1920s. And this is the double bounce walk with Monty. And uh, what you want to do to uh, create this, let's see if I can just get this thing. Um, why is it not working? There we go, let's go to the, so the first slide, the double bounce walk, this is again taken from the animator's survival kit. And we'll start with this simple character, Monty. And here is a kind of roadmap. These are thumbnails for a very basic walk cycle, starting with the contact at frame one, the squash position at frame five, moving through the passing position at frame nine, uh, the up position at 13, the contact at 17, and then the same on the other foot. So this is a highly simplified walk cycle, which is basically the one that I'm using here. So there's the contact at frame one, down into the squash, passing at frame nine, <coughs> uh, up position at 13, uh, and then the contact at, at 17. And then again, cycling at 33. So it's a 16 frame walk cycle, slightly slower than you'd normally do. Uh, a standard walk is probably 12 frames, but it's a kind of amble rather than a, you know, uh, uh, a march time walk. So let me just go back to the double bounce walk. And the big difference between the double bounce walk and the basic walk is that we're going down on the up position. So 13 and 29 are going to be down positions instead of being up positions as they are in the normal cycle. So the very first way to get character into a walk is just very simply to take the up position on the main root control at 13 and 29 and just drag those down. So I'm going to drag select, manually select those two um, keyframes and just move them down. So down they go down there like that. And then in order to make the walk consistent overall, I'm going to take these other keyframes, move them up, flatten those tangents off, and I've now got a double bounce walk. Now it's not quite working yet because we've got some clicking in the legs because we've affected the IK joints and the squash and stretch control up here is still using the same single bounce. So we need to go and change the squash and stretch control. Uh, we need to move that down as well. And then let's move those guys up, flatten those off. And now we should have a double bounce walk. So this is your kind of classic um, happy, peppy, uh, invented in the 1920s, you'll see this used and you watch Monsters Inc and you'll see or robots uh, movie I worked on characters in the background marching along in a kind of happy way doing the double bounce walk. Now we've got to we've got to take this up and down curve on the main body control and we've probably got to move the whole thing down a bit because we are getting quite a lot of stretching in those legs, which we don't want. There we go. That's a little better. And the other thing we can do is to uh, change the up and down on the squash and stretch control just to increase that so there is more up and down. There we go. That's possibly too much. Something like that. So there we go. So that is a double bounce walk. And that wasn't particularly difficult. That's really the sort of simplest character walk you're ever going to get. <laughs> you're, you're basically taking one curve and changing it uh, to make the guy feel kind of happy and upbeat and, and full of fun.
Okay, let's do another one. So let's take a look at, um, let me just go back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go open the um, original uh, file and go back to <coughs> the original basic walk. So let's say we were going to make Monty sad. What could we do? to make Monty feel like he is sad. Any suggestions? How would you make so? How does somebody walk if they're sad? Slow the walk down, says Brent. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. So let's start by slowing it down. So I'm going to drag select the, oh, I just want to make sure that select surface objects is turned off. There we go. So I'm going to drag select the keyframes. I'm going to go to frame one. I'm going to change my timeline. So instead of 33, let's change it to 49. And let's drag select these keyframes. Go to frame one. Select the scale tool that's up here, bottom left. And then holding down shift key with my left thumb. And then with the middle mouse button, I'm going to scale these keys up to... 49, whoops, and hopefully I've got, ah, this is a little tricky to do this. Hopefully I've got grid snap, uh, time snap turned on. It hasn't quite scaled it correctly, but um, uh, no, it, and the time snapping didn't work either. So what I've now got, unfortunately, is keyframes on uh, kind of half, integers. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleanup here. Get rid of that. Um, by just, so I need a keyframe on, that keyframe needs to be on frame four, that one should be on frame seven. So there's a certain amount of cle cleanup to be done to just make this work properly. But what I should have now is a character walking slowly. So that is going to help. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, having looking, yes, Tilt, uh, El, Eileen and Daniel both say, have him looking down at his feet. Yes. So absolutely good suggestions. So, so the first thing is to slow it down, scale those curves and do some cleanup. But I'm not going to do all the cleanup because I don't want to waste your time. But let's have him look down. So let's take the X rotation and let's take that whole curve. And let's move that up so he kind of looks down. So he's looking kind of sad. So there we go, staring at the ground, kind of slow feet. Um, uh, someone else, Byron, suggests decreasing the distance of the steps. Yeah, that could be that could be one way of doing it. I don't want to do that though because that's going to affect the entire cycle, and um, uh, that would be complicated. <laughs> and I want, I'm looking here for the kind of sim simple solutions. Um, easy victories, basically. I think one thing we can do is to uh, make him, uh, whoops, a little bit lower to the ground. Um, uh, so let's just kind of bend the legs a little bit more, make him feel a little bit kind of like he can't even stand up straight. And another thing we can do is we can, Monty has a slightly weird way that he's rigged. If I go to show NURB surfaces, these little guys will pop up. And I have to turn select surface objects back on in order to manipulate these. But I, what I can do is kind of do this, where I can grab these little controllers here, whoops, and kind of make him feel sad by adjusting his expression like that. So there we go. So now he looks sad. And maybe go into the eyes as well. Maybe, maybe whoops. Uh, something funny going on there. Why is that not behaving? Okay, so left eye blink and right eye blink. That's what I need. And then maybe Maybe me make the eyes a little bit wide like that. Something like that. Um, dragging his feet, somebody suggests, uh, from Chris. Yep. Yep. So we could, um, 
we could have the feet kind of trail along the ground so that when he lifts them up, they're kind of dragging kind of like that. And maybe not so much kind of bounce in them. Yeah, maybe even less bounce in the feet. Um, so we're going to make him, we're gonna make him look sad, uh, slow him down, uh, give him a sad expression. And I'm also going to suggest that we could actually give Monty the blues. So if you go to the hyper shade up here, uh, the little blue cocktail olive, and go to find Monty's shader, and then let's just change Monty's color. So let's make Monty blue. Let's literally give Monty the blues. And there we go. So now we've got a sad Monty who's got the blues, who's moving slowly and looking sad. Okay, so that's one. So, well, we've done two. So we've done a kind of peppy character walk. We've done a sad walk. Um, I'm going to go back to the basic um, uh, Monty cycle and let's try a different one. So how would we make Monty feel angry. Let's think about an angry walk. What would an angry walk look like? Any suggestions? Um, uh, TT Murray, and by the way, asks, um, am I using a mouse or a pen? I'm using a Wacom pen, which uh, once you get used to it, is much better for you. The mouse is bad for you because of all the clicking. Um, and Noam asks, is there, is there any possibility that I can demonstrate walking and turning? Uh, no, I think not in this webinar, I'm afraid. Um, turning would be, although I'd probably use a layer on top of that. Just do a walk cycle um, and then animate, uh, animate the character turning or doing its head turning on a separate layer. But that would be probably beyond the scope of this, I'm afraid. So, um, angry expression, yes, says um, Osama, okay. Uh, so let's make Monty angry. So we're going to turn on those um, nerve surfaces again. And we're going to make Monty angry like that. Grr. Whoops. Same mistake I made last time. Okay, so let's make... So there we go. We've got angry Monty, grumpy. Um, fast walk pace. Yeah, we could make it faster. Um, it could be uh, change the color, change the emotion to red, says Felipe. Yes, good suggestion. So let's go back into the, um, let's go back into the, the, the shader and let's make him red. Okay. Kind of, let's make him kind of, there we go. Let's try that. There we go. So he's already looking angry. Um, I think, yes, yeah, and Pedro says stomp his feet. And I think, yeah, higher knees says Island. I think good, good suggestion. So, so let's, let's do that. So uh, actually, let's start with the left foot, with Monty's left foot. So there's our contact at 17. So the passing position is, or the up position is at 13. So let's really lift that up. And we're going to get a kind of, what we want is a kind of stamp. Oops. Uh, where, oh, I don't have auto key turned on. Uh, you should always have auto key turned on. I don't know how I've managed to get this far in the webinar without it. Um, but yeah, you generally want that um, turned on. Um, Abdel Rahman says, have him lean forward. Yes, good idea. We could have him lean forward. Um, yep. So, so kind of like we did with the sad walk. Um, let's have him kind of look grumpy. There we go. So that left foot is helping us. So we want to kind of stomp there. So I'm going to keep the foot up at 15. So I'll start adding some breakdowns here. Maybe rotate that down a little bit. So we want a nice big stomp, maybe even at 16, maybe even keyframe that. So that's favoring it there and then down. And then maybe take that rotation out at 17. So it's just flat on the ground. So take the X rotation out. So we've got to kind of stomp. There we go. Something like that. Grr. And if I do that on the other foot, I should 
be able to get again pretty quickly. So the up position there is at 29. So let's pull that up. 31, again, let's keep that foot up in the air. And then at 32, let's also keep it up in the air. And now we've got a nice kind of stomping Monty feeling angry and bad tempered, like people going to work at Shepherd's Bush Station on a Monday morning. Um, uh, yeah. Um, maybe maybe he, somebody suggested he could lean forward a bit. Yeah, I don't want to change that too much. Um, okay, I think I'm happy with that. That's fine. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. Grumpy Monty, London commuter. Okay, let's try a different one. Let's go to back to the basic one. And let's try some other stuff. So we've done happy Monty, we've done sad Monty, we've done angry Monty. Why don't we try, let's try masculine and feminine. Um, let me show you something cool. Um, so let's just go, if I go to bio walker, bio motion lab walker. This is a really handy thing from the US. Um, it's a, an American invention. It's been around for a while. Um, you, there's a slider here. This is obviously a fairly primitive motion capture but we can take this slider and make this walk masculine and we can make it feminine. So what are the big differences between the masculine and the feminine walk? What are you guys seeing here? There's the neutral walk, masculine walk, feminine walk. Hips weigh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, hips, it's all in the, uh, in the female walk, it's all in the hips. In the male walk, it's all in the shoulders. Um, and of course, you can mess with this stuff a lot, um, thinking of the introduction of um, Ken in Toy Story, is it Toy Story 2 or Toy Story 3? Toy Story 3, uh, fantastic kind of metrosexual walk on Ken just before he falls in love with Barbie. Really, really great work, kind of messing with your head in terms of your expectations of that character. Um, so there's a lot more up and down in the male walk. The feet are wider apart. So if we're gonna make a masculine walk for Monty, we're gonna to have to have more up and down, more shoulders, although it's kind of tricky because he's just a green pea, um, uh, and probably feet wider apart as well. So let's try that. Um, so first of all, let's increase the up and down. So, so let's take the basic up and down motion and let's exaggerate that. So we're getting a little bit, we probably can't go too much higher at the top because we probably end up with some nasty stretching on the legs. So I can't go a lot higher, but I can certainly go more down. Um, so we can, uh, let's move the feet further apart. So let's adjust the, so we're kind of going for, I guess a kind of cowboy walk here. We can change the rotation. Uh, so the feet are kind of splayed out a little bit more. A bit more like that. This is probably a little bit too much actually, in terms of the, because uh, we, don't, we don't wanna make the feet so par, far apart that we, the mechanics start to become a problem. If you do it, if it's too much, then the weight will become a challenge. Um, so feet farther apart, um, uh, side to side motion. I think to really sell this one, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Wouldn't the, the, the knees face outward on males and inward on females suggest Byron? Yep, absolutely. That's a, we could, we could, and you can of course adjust the position of the knees using these guys here. So yes, if I, if I pull that in, it's starting to look more feminine. Uh, um, 
these poll vectors. But what I'm going to do is I'm, going to, I'm kind of going to cheat here and I'm going to go file import and I'm going to find a cowboy hat, which I have downloaded from Turbo Squid. Um, and it's free. So you can, if you want to download it yourselves, um, but I'll just take you there very quickly. So Turbo, I'm sure you guys know Turbo Squid, but it's a great resource and it's full of really useful stuff. And if I type cowboy hat, and then obviously they want to sell us stuff. So um, uh, they're sorting by best match. But if I search by lower prices, I'm going to pull up, it's this one here. And you can download that as an OBJ file and then import that into Maya. So that should work great. Um, so there it is. So let's go to frame one. And uh, let's take it down. And I'm just going to scale it up a bit. So let's go to the scale tool. And then just make that a little bit bigger. And kind of move it into position. So there he is. There's Monty with his cowboy hat. And what we want to do is parent that to Monty. And I'm just going to press four on my keyboard. So I'm in wireframe mode. And then with the hat selected, I'm going to shift select the little um, squash and stretch control on the top of Monty's head, and then press P. Boink. And then press five again, so we're back to normal mode. And let's see if that works. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing. I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. Um, which is slightly messing with me at the moment. Okay, so there we go. Um, let's try a little bit more side to side. Let's just take the, um, that curve. So let's move a little bit more over there and then a little bit more over there. You're always looking for a nice sine wave when you're animating walks. There we go. Okay. So that's maybe not perfect, um, but, you know, it'll do the job. It looks kind of manly there, kind of. Um, all right, so there we go. There's a manly walk. Let's try, um, oh, and um, Roberto suggests, can we rotate the torso? Yeah, actually, good idea. We could, um, we, could have, we could have more of a rotation there. So, like, we could, yeah, rotate him more kind of in towards the lead foot there and there. And then on the opposite contact, have him lead more kind of towards that foot. So you'd end up with... A rotation like that again and looking for a nice sine wave but there we go letting more of a kind of side to side motion there don't know if that helps or not um cool okay so let's so it's it's 6 30 um so let's see how many more we can get done um uh file open scene let me go back to my original and so back to the basic walk. So we've done happy walk, sad walk, um, angry walk, and manly walk. So let's try feminine walk. Um, and for this one, this is reasonably tricky to do, but let's go back to our bio motion walker. Um, and so let's go back to the female walk there. So you've got lots of hips. Monty doesn't really have hips, but we'll do our best. Feet close together less up and down motion, uh, arms tucked in, Monty doesn't have arms. This is basically your kind of catwalk model, right? This is the sort of, um, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's try. So first of all, let's take out some of the up and down because that's going to be the first thing we're going to want to do. Um, whoops. Oh, something funny going on there. There we go, okay. So let's reduce the overall up and down motion. Uh, also the squash and stretch, that's got to come down too. Much less squash and stretch. The feet, we need them to be closer together. Uh, so translate X, I need to move that in more. 
And I also need them to kind of maybe kind of point inwards a little bit. So let's try that one as well. Uh, rotate Y, kind of rotate that in a little bit, see what that does. Is that going to help us? It's going to be tricky to make Monty feel feminine because he is just a little green pea. Now, I know I've got some problems with the um, geometry intersecting there. So we would have to deal with that. Um, so that's going to have to come out a little bit. And then the same on that foot. So that foot's going to come out as well. So there, this needs to, we need to move that out. Okay, there we go. Okay, so something like that. Um, uh, walk in a line, says Eileen. Yes, so we're trying to get, yeah, we're trying to make Monty a catwalk model, not particularly easy. Um, two, the, the feet are way too floppy. Um, so let's, well, let's try, if we take the left foot, so on the contact position, instead of having the heel contact the ground first, let's try the left foot contacting the ground first, and that way we can do something, have it make, be much more kind of uh, soft-footed, as it were, if that makes any sense. Uh, there we go. Let's try that. So that foot goes like that, and then the same there. So, so it's kind of tiptoeing now. Um, uh, Shreyas asks, will a cat walk be different from a walk than it is done on a pole, or is it similar? Yeah, I guess. I mean, on a pole, well, I guess a pole is balance, isn't it? But yes, it would be. You'd be, you'd be trying to, but it would be much slower um, and, and with yeah, very little side-to-side -side motion because you're trying to maintain balance. Um, uh, what about, um, let's get some gender stereotyping going. Um, what if we make, uh, Monty pink? Um, so let's make Monty a nice shade of pink there. Does that help? Kind of. Uh, we really need to get these, um, heel, the, 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 the hip sway so somehow we've got to get hips going so with the the side to side motion we've got that on the root control in the x axis so what if we dial in some hips kind of like that on rotate z uh, and if we try the same thing on the other side at frame 29 so something like that uh wait a minute i think i wanted that to be Mm, wait a minute, I messed this up. So 13, no, I haven't messed it up. But that I need to delete, and then these keyframes need to move up a little bit. That I can delete, and then these guys need to move up like that, because I'm always looking, you're always looking for a sine wave with these things. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, that's ridiculous. It's way too much. Um, so let's dial that out a little bit. And that one. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit less silly. Um, so that's starting to feel feminine, or maybe like a kind of guy in drag. Uh, let's try one more thing, one more cheat. I'm going to go file, import, and find a hat. So here's, um, you can see girly hat with feathers. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I'll show you where I found it. It's another Turbo Squid acquisition. Um, so if you just search for hats at Turbo Squid, I'll show you. It's in a pack. Again, we want to sort, search by lower prices because we've not got a big budget here today. So there it is. It's, it's this hat here. So if you can go ahead and download that, uh, or you could try any of these. And um, uh, I have kind of set myself up 
with a problem with the with the hat because it has a lot of elements to it and it has obviously because it has feathers we would really need to start animating them because they would kind of overlap as Monty or Montet is walking along. But let's go ahead and attach that to Montet. So I need to shift select the squash and stretch control, press P for parent, and we're off. There we go. How ridiculous is that? Um, so somebody suggests a wig. Yeah. <laughs> Monty does look nice in a hat. Generally, I like Monty in hats. Um, so there we go. How are we doing for time? Um, 6.37. Let's do one more. And then um, uh, Brandy suggests bow and lipstick. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But Monty doesn't have a mouth. So I'm not sure how the lipstick would work. But yes, you could use a bow would be good. Maybe better than the hat. The hat is kind of ridiculous, kind of an ascot, not circa 1920 hat. Um, okay, let's do one more. So back to the back to the walk cycle, uh, to the basic um, uh, the basic cycle, and let's let's do for the last one. Uh, oh, someone said Felipe suggests sneaking. Yeah, sneaking would be a good one actually, um, but sneaking might be kind of complicated and. Um, uh, I haven't practiced that one, <laughs> so I'm not going to do it, but it's a good idea. Maybe for another webinar, I'm going to do a military Monty. We're going to, I'm going to go for a, a bit of a goose step here. And if you, um, if we go to Google and search for goose step and it always, for some reason, it always seems to be the kind of, always the, the crazy dictatorships that go for this kind of, um, highly exaggerated style of, uh, uh, um, lifting up of legs um, but I think North Korea is quite keen on this kind of thing so let's try that and once again I'm going to I'm going to start with a cheat this time because because it is soldiers who goose step so here's a helmet and again I have downloaded the helmet from uh, Turbo Squid so you can find it Again, let's search by lower prices, and I think I'll find it here somewhere. Uh, you could <laughs> make him uh, into a um, stormtrooper. That'll be fun. Um, you could use that one, although that comes loaded with quite a lot of baggage. Um, maybe it's gone since I did it. Um, it's strange. Where's it gone? Hmm. Oh well. Anyway, you can use any of these helmets. Um, uh, any of these military guys, they will all work. You can use the German helmet if need be. Um, oh, I think, oh, no, it's not that one. Uh, it looks like the one I downloaded has dropped off, but never mind. You can use any of them. So, um, so there's the helmet, and I'm going to pull it up again at frame one, um, scale it up. Move it down. Just move it into position. And once again, I'm going to press four for wireframe, and then shift select the Squash and stretch control, press P for parent, press five on my keyboard again, and hopefully that's now working great. Um, good, so Monty's now, um, Monty's now marching. So the basic thing with the, um, with the goose step is it's all about the up position. Uh, it's a highly exaggerated up position. Remember, when we walk, we're basically trying to conserve energy. Most people, if you walk like me, you drag your feet a bit and trip on the pavement. Uh, but soldiers do not. Soldiers uh, goose-stepping are full of energy. Um, and here is, so that, for, so the right foot coming up is, so the, the up position is at 29. So what we want is a highly exaggerated up position where we, 
pull this out like that and really crank up that position to kind of ludicrous level. So there it is. And even make it even more. We don't want to break the rig. Um, and then at 27, it's also probably going to have to come out. So we're going to have to add quite a few breakdowns here to make this work. Maybe even, we may even have to keyframe every frame to make it work. Definitely 31. So 31, it still wants to be up in the air because we want a nice um, clunk as it comes down, kind of like we did with the angry walk. There we go. So something like that. So that's, I mean, that, that would need some smoothing out. But that's um, kind of like that. Oh, and Byron says, I remember there was a Donald Duck World War II animation. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, there was. Uh, Walt Disney uh, went to war. Donald Duck went to war. In De Fura's face, I think that one was called. Um, uh, it's still worth watching. It's I mean, it's propaganda, but it's still funny. Um, Okay, so on the other foot, the up position is 13. Um, so let's just pull that up like that, and then we can get just rough in both feet really, really super fast. And then 11, rough it in there. So we basically don't want this leg to bend much. Oh, something nasty going on there. Okay, 13 and then 15. Again, want that foot up in the air. 16, we still want it up in the air because we want it to come down with a nice hard clunk. So something like that. So there's some things to fix. Also, actually, I, I think I needed to change the, um, the body posture. Um, uh, Joao says, got to go. Great work. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope this stuff is useful. I mean, I think the important takeaway from this tutorial is how much you can do just by making variations on a basic walk. That's really what this is all about. So let's take his body pose and rotate it backwards. Um, and I also want to show you before we leave this tutorial uh, webinar, sorry. Oops, what have I done? There we go. Okay, so let's rotate him backwards so he's got more of a kind of military posture. Oh, I've done them. Added a rotation I didn't intend on rotate Z. Okay. There we go. So something like that. There we go. Military Monty. Um, there are lots of resources for animating walks, um, and a number of animators have um, done some stuff. If you go to the Escape Studios animation blog, um, there we go, which is something I um, update a lot. Um, and it's a really useful resource. It's got a lot of stuff, obviously, on the courses going on here at Escape, but it's also got um, some really useful, uh, lots of useful posts on, on animation and how to animation. So this is a really nice video, 100 Ways to Walk by Kevin Parry. Um, and he has basically, this guy has basically gone out and filmed himself, I'll just take the volume down, uh, doing walks. Um, there's a kind of generic walk, uh, and he's done all these different kinds of walks. Um, he's kind of cheating by writing down here what they are because you should really be able to tell without looking. But you can see not just how many variations there are in walks, but how you can use live action reference in order to create your own interesting walks and how to get character and personality into your work. Uh, there's another one by um, another animator, Human Surushnia, uh, which is very, very similar. And... 
it looks like it's Haruman and a bunch of his friends. And uh, what I like about this video is he doesn't, he doesn't tell you what these walks are, right? You've got to figure it out yourself. But because the acting is so good, there's the double bounce right there. Uh, but there's the sad walk. Because the acting is so good, you, you know what they are <laughs> with a bad back. Anyway, I'll leave you to explore these at your leisure. Um, but these show you some of, the, some of the endless variations you, get, you can get in this stuff. So what have we done? We've done a happy walk, the double bounce. We've done a sad walk. We've done an angry walk. We've done a masculine walk. We've done a feminine walk. And we've done a military walk. And we've done these, these six variations all in just over half an hour. So it shows you how, if you, if, you, if you kind of break this stuff down into simple, simple chunks, you can take a basic walk cycle and adapt it and do really kind of almost endless variations uh, on character and personality with, with not that much work. Um, so it's in the remaining 10 minutes, um, I would like to take questions. So have any of you guys got any questions on, on the stuff we've been talking about today? If you don't, it's fine. <laughs> Nobody has to ask questions. So I'm just, just checking, the, um, checking the window to see if there are any questions on what we've been doing. Um, and any more variations we can do on this stuff. Um, uh, ah, now Byron asks, how would you deal with walk when physics is implemented? Talking in a gaming perspective. Now, I'm not really sure how to answer that. I've got to admit one of my, the biggest gaps in my knowledge is working in video games. I haven't done a lot of games work, which is why I was so keen to do this um, um, seminar up at Jagex uh, at the end of last year because um, it, it was really the first time I'd been in a proper games environment. But I mean, physics is, I, I mean, I think as I understand it, games is still very much keyframe animation or working with motion capture, but really breaking down um, walks into, you know, uh, do, you know br breaking stuff down into chunks um, and also understanding the lim limitations of the game engine because you often don't get a lot of subtlety in your work, but you have to make it work for the game engine. So you're very much part of a team um, that's working together towards uh, a common objective. Um, Roberto asks, do you recommend always do a basic walk and then add the emotion? Um, yes, I would. I mean, I think that's kind of, that is the big message here. Start with a basic walk cycle and then um, do your variation based on that because a bit, once you've got the basic cycle, you've got all the basic mechanics out of the way and then you can add the personality to it. So I would never start off by, say, doing a personality walk. I would always start with the basic walk and then, and then move out from there. And obviously, usually you're animating bipeds with arms and heads and so on. The reason I picked Monty is because he's so simple and, and you can get a lot of personality out of him uh, really, really super quickly. Let me just go back to the original, um, uh, original file. And... Um, uh, how long is the course at escape La asks uh, Levan um, yeah, so we, we, we have a whole variety of courses but we do the, the animation short course which is the one that is our sort of core animation course as it were is three months although there is an 18 week version as well um, and um, it's actually just starting no it's just started uh, sorry, we, we just started uh, a few. Uh, we've been into it about a week now. We've got Royce Wesley coming out um, as well. Uh, but we also have an undergraduate course. That's the BA MART, which um, is a three, year, three years for the BA or four years if you, um, if you take the MART. Um, so, and then we're also piloting an evening class in animation um, and there may be an online version coming soon as well. So we're, we're trying to teach animation in a variety of different ways to make it um, reach the, the widest audience. Uh, Felipe says, I've been having trouble with the graph editor and the webinar helped me. Thank you. I appreciate that. The graph editor is the single biggest source of difficulty for most animators when you start out. The graph editor is very confusing. 
I found it very difficult to learn. But once you get the hang of the graph editor, everything else tends to um, tends to fall into fall into place. Um, but uh, but yes, I would always start with the basic cycle and then see where you can go from from there. Um, so, oh, and Pedro asks, how would we make it nervous or afraid? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. That a nervous walk, we'd probably have to animate the character kind of looking around. So there'd be some erratic motion. So that would probably be uh, a more difficult one to do. Uh, um, be, I'd probably have to shoot reference for that. In fact, I think in the, in the video I just showed you guys, in the um, human walk. I think there's a, there's a frightened walk in here somewhere um, where he, can, he kind of, yeah. Uh, Felipe says nervous could be a shaking motion on the body. Yeah. Tiptoe. Yeah. Tiptoe walk where he's kind of looking around. I'd, I'd want to act it out. Definitely. Um, this, I like the bad back walk, obviously. Um, but yes, I mean, I would always film, film yourself, uh, there's kind of a nervous walk right there. No, it's more of a backwards walk. Um, but in, in terms of a tip, there's a, there's a great little, um, I'm just going to search the blog for tripod because there's a great little tripod that I found that I have purchased and it's only 13 pounds at um, Amazon. And it's specially designed. It's got this little um, attachment. It's very, very light. Uh, it's got this little attachment for your phone. So you can use a Samsung or an iPhone on it, and then you can just film yourself doing whatever. And it's very hard to film yourself if you don't have a tripod. So I always recommend buying one of these, only 13 pounds, and then filming yourself acting stuff out because you'll get such better results when you try to um, do that. Um, Masama asks, when I animate my character and import another character which is already animated, both of them end up walking upwards and don't stay on the ground. Oh, I don't know. That sounds something weird going on um but um but you'd have to if they're not staying on the ground then you you basically got to check that up and down motion on the main uh direction controller to make sure that your your down positions are actually down uh, and the same with the feet so make sure that everything is is um staying on the grid and that of course, is what the grid is really there for, is to anchor you in, um, anchor you in 3D space. Any, car any tips for a character using a stick to walk with? Um, yes, actually, one of our tutors here, Lee Caller, has a great um, character animation exercise that he does uh, for an old man animating, uh, animating an old man carrying two walking sticks. Uh, but I'm afraid I don't know how to do it. <laughs> You'd have to take the course and come and let Lee show you how to do it because I don't, I don't know how he does that. It's a really nice tutorial. Uh, do you draw all the keys you need? Absolutely, yes. Um, and actually, that's a, that's a good point. You know, I always start with, um, with thumbnails. So in the case of the, what we've done today, these are the basic thumbnails for the, um, for the Monty Walk. Contact, squash, passing, up. Contact, squash, passing. So that should read up there. That's a mistake. Up and then passing again. And then basically messing with it in the double bounce walk. I always have to thumbnail stuff and really figure it out in advance. You, you always want to be figuring it out in your head before you start animating. And for most animators, certainly for me, the way I figure it out in my head is to do thumbnails and to do a proper plan. And that means all the poses and all the timing figured out in advance or as far as possible in advance before you commit yourself to, um, to actual animation. Um, uh, Byron says, where do you see animation going with performance capture being such a big deal? Um, yes, absolutely. I mean, and a lot of what animators do now on many projects is working with performance capture. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we teach that at Escape, of course. Uh, it's part of the curriculum. And I did it myself on a movie called um, Monster House, which I worked on more than a decade ago now. And we use performance capture data. But a performance capture won't, doesn't get you 100% of the way there. It'll get you 50, 60, 70% of the way there. I mean, consider, for example, Benedict Cumberbatch uh, 
doing mocap work with Smaug on The Hobbit. You know, uh, his work was great, but there's a limit to what the animators are going to be able to use from that. You know, in reality, there's an awful lot of um, uh, there's an awful lot of work that goes in by the animators. Chris says, when you animate a walk in a scene, do you create a cycle, then move the character or anim animate each step forward? That's a really good question. And there are two basic ways to animate a walk cycle. One of them is this method, which is the, um, the on the spot method, <coughs> which is the method that's most commonly used in studios. The only problem with that is when you add a forward translation on it, you sometimes do get the feet slipping. So if I, for example, take my timeline up to 100, and then add a forward translation on the, um, on, the f on the main world control. And then straighten that curve out so it's a nice straight line. There's a good chance that I'm going to get the feet slipping here. They shouldn't slip, but they might slip. Um, if I've done my job properly, they won't. Um, it looks like they are slipping a little bit. Let's move that up a bit. There's also, by the way, to stop feet sliding in a walk cycle, there's a great new plugin, um, which uh, actually if I go to the Animation Apprentice blog, that's my online school. And um, uh, let me go to the, um, da, 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 here we go. There's this post here, the Anchor Transform plugin. This is a really great little plugin, which allows you to, um, uh, which, which really helps with, preventing feet from sliding in a walk cycle. And if I just run this little video here, it just shows you what it does. So here you can see this dinosaur and you can see the feet sliding around there. So what the anchor transform plugin does is you basically grab the foot, you can see it slipping around there and suddenly that foot is locked down. There you go, in 13 seconds, that demonstrates what the plugin does. And um, here's a little, there's a little um, explanation here of how to use it. And I found it, one of our SKPs, Kevin Richards, who's working at Cloth Cat Animation down in Cardiff, he, he um, flagged this one up as a great resource for uh, animating walk cycles. Byron asks, when should you use FK and when do you use IK? Uh, well, with, with legs, you're almost always with IK. You very rarely use FK. Um, uh, so I, I can't think of a situation where you would use FK on legs because you always want those feet to be rooted to the ground. So I guess the only time you would ever use FK on legs is if it was like a beetle on its back and the legs were wavering around in the air, then you might use FK. Otherwise, um, uh, you wouldn't. Okay, uh, I think we're out of time. And um, so thank you so much for um, listening. It's been really fun doing this. Um, if you want to find out more about what we do at Escape Studios, um, uh, an easy way to contact me, whoops, excuse me, is to go to the animation blog and you can see my, uh, my email address is here, uh, alex.williams1 at pearson.com and I'm very happy to answer questions about what we do. But keep an eye on the blog because there's tons of useful stuff. I blog almost every day. There's tons of useful stuff about what's going on at Escape. Um, there's a video link to somebody's taking it down now annoyingly. You can see some of the amazing work that gets done here at Escape Studios. Um, and success stories, people going on to do really cool stuff. So um, stay in touch. Uh, thank you so much. So I'm being told I have to stop now. So that is it. That's all, folks. But thank you so much for listening.